Hey guys, welcome to a brand new video to the channel. So Jagex have just released the right click examine for runecrafting. Probably the 110 skill coming after woodcutting and fletching. So what we're going to be doing is going through the post. I'll make sure the link to the post is in the description as well if you guys wanted to check it out. And just look to see if there's anything we can spot. Anything to get excited for or anything worthwhile noting as well. Now the thing I'm going to start with first is I find it a bit weird that we're not too far away from the woodcutting and fletching update coming. I know they're doing game jam and stuff, but I would have thought we would have had a couple more crumbs of content in terms of what's coming with woodcutting and fletching. I really think woodcutting and fletching, I really think woodcutting and fletching is going to be a better chance to make GP than runecrafting. I think before I've even read the post, so I'm not, uh, it's not informed anyway, but I do think woodcutting and fletching, because it's a resource and production skill as well, I do think it's got a better chance to make some GP. Only because you can make the GP by just cutting the logs, or you can take them a bit further and produce them with fletching and taken from there but excited either way i just thought we would have seen something for woodcutting and fletching already but i'm pretty sure it'll be coming in the next couple of weeks so let's get started so what is the update so we're going to continue to expand the skills beyond level 99 runecrafting then going up to 110 and introducing new masterwork weapons so it only made sense that runecrafting ties in with mage so it's going to be a masterwork staff coming here which again is interesting the masterwork 2h sword i think didn't quite hit what it should have so I'm hoping and interested to see what's different about staff, how the staff will be presented, along with what items are going to be needed for the staff. Because at the minute, there are quite a few items, especially the says set, which kind of need a bit of a bump up in price because it needs to be broke down. But saying that, T95 dual wield is so cheap as well. So it's very interesting to see what the plan is to go with that as well. But the fact that you're going to be creating your higher tier magic weapons with runecrafting is really, really cool. Um, and I think it just brings some more benefit to the runecrafting skill. The runecrafting skill didn't need more benefits anyway because it's by far one of the most consistent money makers going at the minute. It's always a top of whenever we do any sort of money making videos. But it's nice to have a look at another dimension as well. If you can collect stuff and use your runecrafting skills to produce weapons or further on other stuff, it's a good way to have benefits in training runecrafting. So starting at 100 runecrafting, so not too far into the 110, you'll be able to gain access to crafting inert magic weapons that you can bring with you to your preferred altar. As you craft the runes, there is a chance that you're going to lose these runes to be able to charge the weapon. And this is going to be a way to create a tier 90 weapon by just doing normal rune crafting and losing a little bit of your runes. So yes, you won't get all the runes you originally had, but I'm really interested to see if it's going to apply to combo runes, necromancy runes, or if that particular staff being binded to a certain type of um, rune is going to have benefits of using that rune. So if we're going to um, use this staff for, let's say, natures, is it going to give you the possibility of using natures as well? But as you work your way up, especially up to the 110, your imbuing efficiency will increase and you'll unlock options to sacrifice more runes and get even more XP as a result. In a minute, they're currently considering sacrificing a weapon for a full XP drop, but they're just debating that now. Again, they're trying to see a little bit of feedback from this as well, which I do like. We put out these right click examine posts to sort of like test the waters, see what people think, think, and also wait for any feedback. So if you do have feedback, we have a link for the Discord at the bottom of the post. I do encourage you to go and like drop some feedback as well. Make sure it's like constructive as well. Don't go in just flame and say this is a rubbish idea. Make sure it's constructive and you've got your points across as well. So the thing which seems to be what we're here for is the magic staff, a tier 100 weapon that blends the mystery of previous items with one new process for magic creation. So it's definitely going to be a two-handed staff. Not seeing anything to suggest that it's going to be a one and an orb, but that's interesting. So what I imagine it's doing with the pose, it's going to be very like similar to previous things. The Masterwork 2H sword requires like some form of items to be broke down. The Masterwork armor requires some form of armor to be broke down, which is good because it does bring value to the bosses it sort of like takes the armor from. So Masterwork needs the armors from Nex to be broken down. And because of that, Nex has been very consistent and stable in terms of Moneymaker, which is good. And that is kind of like what we want to be doing, like especially things like Virago um, and maybe even God Wars 2 to a point do need a bit of like items leaving the game to create that kind of demand. So um, runes, obviously with runecrafting, you have to change the runes. They're going to look at involving combination runes and um, combination runes to put like certain spells and stuff, which is actually very nice. A level 5 enchant as well is going to be pretty good. And again, it's going to require combination runes for that. Um, as demand for combination runes increase, they expect their market value to rise. We're also introducing some improvements to are going to remove the chance to fail when making combination runes, which are unlockable at your runecrafting level. And binding necklace will double any combination runes you make, which 
for a time being, I imagine once this release is like here, combination runes will go high because obviously it's trying to catch up with demand. But if you're looking for a moneymaker off the bat, maybe even leading up to this release, maybe doing things like combination runes can be a really good way to make some GP. Combination runes are already quite good ways to make GP, but now it could be an even better way. But introducing the elemental rune, this all-in-one rune will be usable as air, water, earth and fire, and also any other elemental combination rune too. This will require 100 rune crafting and will require for some new spells. So the new spells, the main focus of these new spells will be to have desirable effects without dipping too far into combat scenarios. So maybe this is going to be more skilling focused spells, which it does say, new teleports and utility spells, which is nice because for every time they've done a batch of like skilling or utility spells, generally they're very good. Think of the last update of Lunar spells. They brought a whole different dimension to the game and ways of bringing in some massive new money makers as well which is very, very nice. And then a really, really big pouch. What is a runecrafting update with a big pouch? So essence pouches, again, are nice. Um, and what I'm trying to sort of gauge off is the old school runescapes colossal pouch. So the new pouch, which are currently dubbing the expansive pouch, require a collection of steps and a runecrafting level beyond 99 to make. So as we've done with the new pickaxe, as I'm sure we're going to do with a new hatchet, the new pouch is something you'll be getting as well. But this single slot will be capable of holding 44 essence at least, but they're still sort of debating where they want to be as well. My guess would be to probably go 50. This pouch won't work alongside of a pouch, but require each of the existing pouches with creation process. So if you're not familiar with the old school process, the um, colossal pouch is basically all the pouches knitted together. And this is basically what sounds like we're coming out of as well. So yeah, that's nice. Again, it um, just means there's less pouch filling. But what I'm hoping is if you're putting all the pouches together, you're going to have a considerable amount more essence than just those pouches. Else, It's not really, I don't know, more essence is more essence. But if you're going to go through all the effort to create that pouch, I kind of hope that there's a big reward for it, like a big pouch to carry quite a considerable amount of essence. Even if it's something like 100, obviously runecrafting with a shift of spells and stuff, Room prices are going to be very unstable, maybe for the next couple of months until it's released, or maybe like as of release. The combination rooms is the combination rooms at least are going to be very, very volatile. And it definitely might be worth doing it. I kind of take back what I said. I do think um room crafting on release will be some decent money at least. Again, I think when Necromancy Room Crafting was released, that was absolute bank because there were new types of rune. That elemental rune is going to come into play in a lot of scenarios and people for convenience will use that elemental rune. Not only that as well, combination runes will have some decent profit. Well, even more profit than what they currently are. But I'm thinking that because the elemental rune can cancel the combination rune, maybe the elemental rune is your all-in-one solution, which people will probably go for because they favor bank space and stuff like that. But overall, it's an okay 110. It's a little bit underwhelming, in my opinion, because I think with runecrafting, there's so much to it. I think maybe they've made a little mistake not sort of getting magic to tag along with it because it's almost thinking as if it's like waiting for magic to, to pull up as well and then runecrafting will have its use. Maybe do this one a little bit later on when you're ready to release all the combat ones and then do magic alongside runecrafting. It just makes sense, um, in my opinion. It just makes sense for those two to go together. Whereas it seems in little parts here, the runecrafting update is waiting for magic to catch up. But some really good little things as well. And this is the thing about these 110 skills. Not all of them need a massive overhaul. Some of them just need some little tweaks and some little changes. New spells, so it's got brand new demand on runes. A big pouch to improve your runecrafting and make sure you can runecraft even more. Combo runes now have it an absolute use. So all combo runes are going to be useful. A brand new type of rune as well, which means that more people are going to use that. And there's very limited supply, so people will probably jump on it. The binding necklace is actually going to have a use and could be a great way to make some GP beforehand because that's going to be double runes rather than just being able to create combo runes, which again is very nice. And it sounds like combination runes now is like a 100% chance to be able to do it. There's no chance of failing. Didn't realize there was a chance to fail, but who knows? The brand new masterwork staff, again, that's going to bring in some ways of making more GP at a certain boss. I'm pretty sure it'll be Virago, but we shall see which essence is needed for making the tier 100 staff. There's also a chance now to take your staff and get extra runecraft and XP while using it at an altar. Yes, you're going to lose some runes, but at the end, you're going to get more and more of a runecrafting buff by just using it at the altar as well. And yeah, a very exciting update. Again, I did say I do feel like it could have been a little bit more, um, but I do think it's still going to be very good. I still think there's going to be a lot of content released with it, and I do think there's going to be a lot of money-making methods as well off the back of it as well. But if you guys are looking forward to it, let me know. Let me know what you think. Again, I'm going to throw the post in the description. 
But yeah, that's uh, my thoughts on this. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop those comments down below. Let's get a discussion going with everyone. What do you guys think? Is it going to be a good one or is it going to fall a bit flat? We shall see. But uh, thank you guys for watching once again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.